different world, which only the strongest endure. We're just trying not to go crazy in here. Locked up and punished. It's forbidden to talk to the other prisoners. All this behind bars. Gangs. Violence. Drugs. Harassment. A daily struggle for survival in the toughest prisons in the world. Shitoma, Ukraine, a large drab city in a country ravaged by economic crises, war, and corruption. The average wage is just 300 euros per month. Crime has been on the rise for years. Those breaking the law are very likely to end up here. Colony 8, one of the toughest and most notorious prisons in Ukraine. It is said that no one has ever escaped from here. Over 800 prisoners are behind bars here under maximum security. Every inmate here has committed at least two murders. Until 20 years ago, the guards even carried out death sentences at this wall. One section of the prison is particularly notorious, the wing for the 160 lifers. You have to be ready for anything from these people. Attacks, suicide, mutilation, anything can happen. You cannot drop your guard for a second. If you end up in this wing, you have absolutely nothing to lose. Life imprisonment in Ukraine means being behind bars until you die. Eight o'clock in the morning, guards in Colony 8 begin their shift. Alexander Basilyuk is the senior guard in the wing for lifers. I hope the day goes well and there will be no major incidents. Anyone, whether guard, lawyer, or visitor, entering or leaving Colony 8 must first pass through the security check. Cell phones, weapons, drugs, alcohol, even energy drinks are strictly forbidden. The entrance building is separated from the rest of the prison by several doors and a security corridor. If a prisoner actually manages to escape from his cell, he won't get further than here. The prison is made up almost entirely of locks, doors, and electronic surveillance systems. Colony 8 resembles a fortress. There is barbed wire everywhere you look, barred windows, and snipers and watchtowers. Four-meter-high twin walls around the perimeter Whatever is concealed between these two walls is a state secret. Not even the guards know what it looks like in there. For the 40 guards working here, the day starts with a briefing. Every incident, no matter how small, is reported. Everyone listens very carefully. This information can be life-saving. The guards need to be ready for anything. Cell 319. The detainee is mentally unstable and prone to self-harm. Cell 115. Feshenko is a suicide risk. Increased surveillance. The cellmate is depressed. Increased surveillance here, too. A shift lasts 24 hours in Ukraine's toughest prison. 24 hours spent with the country's worst criminals. Around 70 cameras in the buildings ensure that anything moving gets noticed. And even if it doesn't seem like it, behind the old-fashioned looking facade, there is a sophisticated and highly complex security system.
Inmates are housed in the multi-level main building, located in the center of the prison grounds. Three levels of security are provided. Pre-trial detention, where around 400 criminals are awaiting trial, some of them for years. Level two, felons with a sentence of up to 15 years in prison. And the wing for lifers, housed in a separate wing of the building. It is a prison within a prison. 160 felons are sitting here, all multiple murderers or terrorists. Access to this wing is specially secured. To gain entry, senior guard Alexander must go through a multi-level security system of mechanical and electronic locks. These measures are intended to prevent prisoners from escaping if they manage to overpower a guard. Major, there were no incidents in the lifer's wing. Anything else? All good. 90 cells spread over three floors. Prisoners are either held in the cells alone or in pairs behind thick steel doors sealed off from the outside world. Contact with others is strictly forbidden. Signs on each door give information about the name, age, and crime of the cell inmates. They also indicate whether an inmate is particularly aggressive or suicidal. Senior guard Alexander begins his shift each morning with cell inspections. I check whether the prisoners are actually in their cells, what their state of health is, what the cell looks like, and whether there are any irregularities. Cells are not open for this purpose. Guards try to avoid direct contact with inmates whenever possible. The biggest threat to us is an attack. Everyone here is condemned to life imprisonment. They have nothing to lose. This makes them very dangerous. Working here is a daily battle. When a cell is opened, at least three guards are present. The procedure follows strict rules. When the guard opens the door, the prisoners have to stand in the middle of the cell with their arms folded behind their backs. Volodymyr Ostrovsky knows the procedure. He has been in Colony 8 for 23 years, convicted of two murders. He shares 12 square meters with a cellmate. Toilet, sink, bed. Space isn't available for much more here. You get used to everything. You adapt, you survive. That's probably the most accurate way to describe what we're doing here, surviving, and trying not to go insane. Like almost everyone here, Volodymyr clings to the hope of being pardoned. In theory, after 20 years, a pardon is possible. In practice, only a handful of pardons have been granted in recent decades. I committed murder when I was drunk. There was an argument. Somebody offended me and I just couldn't take it. My attitude was different back then than it is today. Then it happened. I ended up killing people. What can I say? Since that day 23 years ago, his life has played out in 12 square meters. Besides freedom, what the inmates miss most are trivial little things. Hot water, you can only get it from a kettle. Volodymyr is one of the few lifers who are allowed to leave their cell at least for a few hours a day 
to work, although only under high security measures. The doorways are just 60 centimeters wide. Passing through them must be sideways. This is to prevent inmates rushing the guards. A search then takes place outside the cell. I make sure that the prisoner is not carrying any forbidden items, for example, a sharpened handle from a spoon or something, or a cell phone. Escorted by two guards, they go to a workshop in another wing. A special feature of Colony 8, prisoners never have to go outside, whether they are being taken to work, to the doctor, or for a meeting with a lawyer. Every single area is accessible by stairs, corridors, or walkways. One more measure to prevent inmates from escaping. When a lifer leaves a wing, they are also escorted by a dog handler. The prison's dogs are trained to know the difference between uniforms and other clothing. This will ensure that the dogs only attack inmates in the event of an altercation. Even disguises would not help the inmates because the dogs also identify prisoners by smell. The security concept has proven itself to be successful. The prison is more than 100 years old now, and no one has ever managed to escape from it. For lifers, the prison runs six different workshops. Volodymyr works in the carpentry workshop. He spends eight hours here in a space of just under 50 square meters. Luxury compared to his mini cell. And he gets to have contact with others. Up to five inmates work together in one workshop. But you need to have had a good track record to be allowed to work, because prisoners who work get access to tools. Tools that are ideal for use as weapons. Being allowed to work, however, is a privilege and Volodymyr and the other inmates are well aware that anyone who starts acting conspicuously will have such a privilege instantly revoked. Prisoners who are allowed to work are carefully selected by the prison management. We have been psychologically examined to check our state of mind and to make sure that we can get along with the others here. Work is very important to me. There are so many constraints on us everywhere, so having the opportunity to interact with others is invaluable. The prisoners who work earn around 30 euros a month, money which they can use to buy food or cigarettes. But the most important thing they get is an escape from boredom and monotony, at least for a few hours a day. Those not among the privileged few who work vegetate in their cells, practically around the clock, without any contact with others. In Ukrainian prisons, more than 50 prisoners take their own lives every year. But those who behave impeccably over decades may get the chance of being transferred to another, better prison. Just beyond the walls of Colony 8 lies a second prison, Colony 4. In Soviet times, it was a labor camp for over 3,000 people. Today, it is a medium security prison. The concept, plenty of freedom of movement for the prisoners on the one hand, military drill and draconian punishments on the other. Five forty-five in the morning. It's still quiet in Colony 4 just the guards on the night shift making their rounds. But that is about to change. 
A total of 800 inmates are serving out their prison sentences here. Murderers, robbers, rapists, violent criminals, drug dealers. The prison's special feature, instead of cells, inmates live in large communal accommodation blocks. Wake up is at six o'clock sharp. The prisoners then have exactly 10 minutes to get ready for the morning roll call in the yard. Maxim Dorilio has now been in prison for five years. He was convicted of assaulting a police officer. He has four more years to go. Four years in which every day is the same as the next. We get up, have breakfast, and then go to work. 10 past six. After the guards have checked that no one is left in the building, the roll call follows. Handcuffs and body searches do not exist here. To keep control of the 130 inmates of the accommodation block, the guards instead rely on military drills. Seven zero. Seven one. Seven two, step forward. Every morning, the same procedure. And everyone knows, if one of the inmates steps out of line, the whole group is punished. A narrow corridor leads to Colony 4's canteen. The prisoners eat here three times a day. More than 800 prisoners need to be fed in just one hour. The food is served on a conveyor belt. Although all prison inmates gather here together during mealtimes, calm and discipline prevail. All fear the consequences of breaking the rules. Breakfast, a bowl of porridge, a slice of bread, and a beaker of juice. It doesn't look appetizing, but the inmates are used to it. Most of the time, you can eat it. They don't have a choice anyway. If you don't like the food, tough luck. Right after breakfast, it's off to work for Maxime. Before entering the workshop area, he needs to register at a checkpoint. Last name? Derilio. Name? Patronym? Maxim Avignovich. Date of birth? February 23rd, 1995. In the workshop area, prisoners are free to move during working hours without being escorted by guards. Colony 4 covers an area of almost 20,000 square meters. The administrative buildings are located at the entrance. Behind it are six accommodation blocks. Each one houses more than 100 prisoners. The largest part of the prison grounds, however, is taken up by the workshops. In the past, goods were produced here on a piecework basis and delivered by train across the whole Soviet Union. Most of the buildings have now fallen into disrepair. Whereas several thousand prisoners were once housed in the colony, today there are just 800, and not all of them work.
The inmates mainly process timber. The prison then sells the products to cover parts of its costs. Working conditions are abysmal. Hardly any protective equipment, outdated machinery, dust, and dirt. Earnings depend on production volumes. In other words, if the inmates are lazy, they earn hardly anything. Nevertheless, most of them willingly put in the effort, like Maxime. Of course, it's exhausting work, but you get privileges. Plus, the time passes faster when you're working. I've got a long sentence. What else am I going to do? Just sit around? What for? In this way, I can make a little bit of money. It is striking that not a single guard is to be seen in the entire workshop. Just a workshop manager who supervises the work. I don't have a gun. If there is trouble, specially trained people are available to take care of it. But it's always better to just keep calm and talk to people. 800 prisoners who are relatively free to move around the entire grounds and only around 30 guards. Nevertheless, deterrence is the primary means of keeping control. Guards patrol the entire grounds randomly, and anyone caught doing anything forbidden faces harsh penalties. Nearly 100 cameras are also spread around the site. In the main monitoring room, images are scanned 24 hours a day to spot any misdemeanors. Another method of keeping the prisoners in check and demonstrating the authority of the guards are the periodic searches of the accommodation blocks. You do the first two beds and the nightstands. You, the next two beds and nightstands. You, the next two beds and the nightstands. We're looking for anything that's forbidden for prisoners to possess. Everything must be reported, understood? Let's go. There's no privacy here. Guards rummage mercilessly through every corner of the dormitory. They know how creative inmates can be in concealing things. Bedding, pillows, or mattresses could be used as hiding places. We also often find forbidden things in the nightstands. We've just found a magnet that can be used to fix and conceal things underneath beds. Anything not officially permitted is confiscated, even seemingly harmless items. Prisoners should get a sense for who is in charge in prison. The findings this time curtains, an extension cord, a magnet, and a nail. OK, we're done with the search. The confiscated items need to be documented. Any comments? Let's go. On to the next search, leaving behind a mess. Those owning the confiscated items will be held accountable. Anyone getting out of line will end up here. The pit. That's what the prisoners call the prison's isolation wing. For a first offense, prisoners are held here for two weeks. 24 hours a day in solitary confinement with no distractions and plenty of time to reflect. If that hasn't been long enough for them to see sense, the next time, the stay will be much longer. The most severe punishment in Colony 4 is daily routine next door in Colony 8. Isolation and maximum security, a prison built for the country's most serious criminals.
Each window has a cell number next to it. So if video cameras pick up anything suspicious, guards know instantly where to go. These are the men who intervene in the event of violence, attempted escape, or rioting. Specially trained guards practice how to keep control in extreme situations several times a week. Another security measure is for any vehicle entering or leaving the prison to pass through a security checkpoint and undergo strict inspection by Ihor Dobrovolsky. The main objective for inspecting vehicles leaving the prison is to prevent an escape. Officer Dobrovolsky checks to make sure no inmate is hiding under the trash. The horse cart is clean and may exit. Any vehicle entering the prison also undergoes a search. Smuggling via deliveries to the prison is a major problem in Ukraine. Passport, cell phone, documents. Some inmates are willing to pay a lot to get their hands on highly sought after items, such as cell phones or drugs. And sometimes drivers who earn a monthly wage of just 200 euros take the opportunity to make a little extra money. The whole vehicle could be used to conceal things. Items could be hidden in the engine compartment using magnets. Or here, under the fender. You just never know. Stuff could be anywhere. Cash, cell phones, alcohol, drugs and weapons are the things that are most often smuggled. I found all kinds of things. I wouldn't know what to tell you about first. There's so many things. The officer takes more than half an hour to check the truck. He doesn't find any contraband. The driver is cleared to drive into the prison grounds. When he leaves, Ihor will again thoroughly check the truck. Most deliveries to the prison end up here, in the kitchen. Three times a day, a team of 10 inmates prepares food for the prisoners in Colony 8. Right now, they're getting lunch ready. Soup, grains, and fish. Supervising the kitchen is Anatoly Shutsky. His task is to check that the prisoners are working and that the meals are reasonably edible. He is also responsible for handing out knives. I document every knife that I hand out. I record the time, who gets the knife, and when the knife has been returned. If a knife is missing in the evening, nobody leaves the kitchen until it is returned. I've been here for 18 years. So far, I have not had any problems with the prisoners. Working in the prison kitchen is a highly sought after job among inmates. The work is not too strenuous and the pay is good. However, inmates are selected according to strict criteria. Those convicted of violent crimes or murder have no chance of getting a kitchen job. 
Vladimir Shavorsky has been in Colony 8 for two years, convicted of multiple thefts. The qualified bricklayer has been working in the prison kitchen for a year. Outside of prison, I cooked for myself. That's how I learned how to do it. Of course, it was better at home than here, but it's okay. No one here expects much anyway. I'm happy to have the job. It means I can buy something nice from the store. Sausages, cookies, candy, coffee, tea. The prison budget for food is just one euro per day and per inmate, or about 30 cents per meal. Grains, potatoes, and cheap fish are the main ingredients of every meal. The highlight is an indefinable sauce. Before the food is served to the inmates, the prison staff must taste it. This is to prevent inmates settling grievances by spoiling the food. The honorable task falls to the deputy duty officer and the prison's hygiene officer. Only when they have tasted each dish may the food be served to the inmates. The verdict after a few spoonfuls? Sufficient calories, lots of carbs. So for the people serving their sentences here, it's really not bad. Not bad, you're right. Grains, fish, sauce, everything. The soup also has enough ingredients. Tastes good. Just a signature is required. Then the cooks may get the food ready for serving. Flasks ensure that the food is at least not completely cold by the time it reaches the inmates. There is no canteen here, like the one next door in Colony 4. It would be far too dangerous. The prisoners are served the food in their cells. The doors are not even opened. Bowls are passed through small hatches. The high-risk inmates should have as little contact as possible, but they all get as much food as they want. Once a day, the lifers are allowed to leave their cell to go to the courtyard. What sounds nice is in reality a small cell without a roof, with the prisoners being under constant surveillance. It is forbidden to talk to the other prisoners next door. Everyone has yard time individually. One hour max. Most inmates use the short time for exercise, as does Pavlo Maximyuk. The 35-year-old was the head of a big gang, which was responsible for multiple robberies and several murders. He's been here for 12 years. Being out in the fresh air and doing exercise is important to me. I have a family and children. I want to keep myself healthy so that when I'm free, I can live a normal life. The unrealistic dream of being freed from prison also keeps him alive. Life would otherwise be too difficult to endure here. We're locked in our cells for 23 hours a day. You read. You watch television, 
You exercise. When it's cold, I also do my exercises in the cell. There's breakfast, lunch. I watch movies, news, what's going on in the world. You, you get used to it. You kind of adapt mentally and physically. There's nothing much else to do. For most inmates of Colony 8, this is the highlight of the day. One hour in a small roofless cell with no contact to others. Just as stones throw away, things look very different. In the second prison, Colony 4, the inmates live in large shared accommodation blocks, also under strict security measures, but with a relatively large amount of freedom. The accommodation blocks have no locks, and the inmates can move around freely. A TV room and a kitchenette are available. A team of permanent guards ensures things remain calm and orderly. They check that the prisoners comply with all the rules. Any infringement, no matter how small, is meticulously documented and sanctioned. For example, not wearing the uniform correctly is a violation of the rules. If the name tag is not sewn on, then the inmate must go before a disciplinary committee. Just one or two negative reports mean zero chance of being released early from prison. Those who behave exemplary and work or get money from their families can go shopping in the prison's own shop. You can get almost everything here. Tea, coffee, sausages, candy. Only cigarettes are not sold. They can only be brought in or sent by families. In addition to food, there are also plenty of everyday items. Especially important, toilet paper. Because it isn't provided by the prison. That means if you don't have money, you won't have toilet paper. They usually buy soap, shaving cream, and, of course, toothpaste. And notebooks are very popular. Larissa and her colleague Tetiana are the only female employees in the prison. They have been working in the prison shop every afternoon for over 30 years. By now, they have gotten used to dealing with the exclusively male prisoners, but that had not always been the case. I was a little scared at first. For several months, I had bad dreams. Back then, they all had shaved heads. They all looked the same. I was still young. To make a purchase from the kiosk, prisoners need to first order from and pay Tetiana. There is no cash. This is intended to prevent illegal dealings and hierarchies forming among prisoners. Those who work get their wages credited directly to a prison account. Families can also pay money into it. And Tatiana conscientiously keeps records of every penny the inmates spend at her store. The prisoners give their last name. I then ask to which section they belong, whether to two or four or to five. Then I check which section the person is in, take his file, check how much money he has. Here, for example, 114.18. I write the date, the amount, and then the inmate signs. For inmates, shopping is one of the rare opportunities to exchange at least a few brief words with someone from outside the walls. It's very different next door, in the maximum security prison. The maxim here is as little contact as possible for the prisoners. Hardly a word is spoken, even when serving food.
The corridors are deserted most of the time. The inmates sit well secured behind thick steel doors in their cells, monitored by a multitude of cameras. Communication of any kind between the inmates is strictly forbidden. But if you have a lot of time on your hands, you get creative. Prisoners exchange news and trade cigarettes and food by string mail. Apart from knocking signals, this is the only way to communicate with others. The guards are, of course, aware of it, but they do not always catch the perpetrators in the act. But this is not the only challenge for senior guard Alexander. Every day is a game of chess. They try to beat us, we try to beat them. A game that ultimately has consequences. If they don't understand that they're behaving badly, then they will be punished. One of the measures taken by the guards regular searches. At least once a month, Alexander and his team search each of the 100 cells. The procedure is always the same. One prisoner leaves the cramped cell with his belongings, the other stays inside. Turn around. First, a body search. The guard and prisoner are now together in a very confined space. The risk of being attacked is now at its greatest. We're looking for forbidden items, sharp objects, alcohol, drugs, cell phones. The guards do not have any modern search equipment. The prison does not have the money. Instead, they have to rely on their eyes and experience. The prisoners have been here for many years. They're constantly thinking about ways to hide things. They hide the stuff in the toilet, under the bed, in the bucket. They're also hiding places in books. There's nothing in here this time, but often they cut out pages and then hide forbidden things in the empty space. Besides drugs, alcohol and money, the guards are mainly looking for one thing homemade weapons that prisoners can use to attack guards. With a little skill, you can make a weapon out of almost anything, from cutlery to a tin of shaving cream. In the worst case, it could cost a guard his life. 40 minutes later, the search is over. We didn't find anything forbidden this time. After both inmates and all their belongings have been returned to the cell, the doors are relocked. The inmates will now remain locked in their cell until the next day's courtyard visit. Fair treatment, according to the guards. I can't feel sorry for them, or I'd be doing the wrong job. When you work here, you can't perceive them as normal people. Yes, they are human beings who also need to be treated as human beings, but they have committed serious crimes and should never be trusted. It's getting dark. The beginning of the worst part of the day for the prisoners. No more distractions provided by work or meal times. Instead, nothing but a gaping sense of boredom and plenty of time to reflect.
ex-gang boss Pavlik spends most of his day watching TV. He is serving his sentence alone in a solitary cell. I think a lot. I just sit around. Almost the whole day I'm alone. It automatically makes you think. Unfortunately, there's no technology available to determine whether someone has reformed themselves and could be allowed out. Everybody's just hoping. Me too. I've been here for a long time. His only company is cat. Prison management tolerates cats in the cells as long as the prisoners take good care of them. I call him my son. We play and cuddle. You get used to each other. I've already been asked if I'm going to take him when I leave here. How can I leave him here? I'll take him with me. But the reality is different. Neither of them will probably ever leave this cell again. Bedtime. On the stroke of 10 o'clock, the guard turns off the lights. The light switches are on the outside. For the next eight hours, the prisoners must lie in their beds. They are not permitted to watch television or to have any conversations with their cellmates. Next door in Colony 4, there is also silence. Here too, from 10 o'clock onwards, anyone not on night shift in the workshop must be in their beds. The guards check that everyone is present. Then the lights are switched off here as well. Thus ends another day in Ukraine's toughest prison. A prison where some of its inmates will most certainly never leave alive. Locked behind bars until the end of their days.